so nice. It's so big. It's amazing. So nice. Oh my god, the stairs are so good. And you make a very good deal in our hostel. We pay five euros per bed, including breakfast. Really amazing. Five euros, it's amazing. Yeah. In the hostel's very nice. So Good if you want to know where we stay, link is always in the description. Now so. we're just going to go some breakfast, right? And after that, we're just part in the city. Let's go eat. Let's go. So today we're just visiting the best side of the Budapest. This is considered the plain side of the city. Yeah, I think as you can see, like all the streets yeah. are in plain, and there's a lot of small avenues. Yeah, small avenues. Again, I have to say that I'm loving the art on the streets because yeah, in the buildings there's that, there's graffiti like that. Yeah, a lot of people. Very pretty. And there's a lot of people, not tourists, but yeah. there's like a lot of locals. Yeah. A lot of locals. But there's not many tourists, so I think it's a good uh, time yeah. to to visit, to right? So we decided to start our day uh, in the National Museum of Hungary to get to know the history of the country. Behind me is this beautiful building that you're going to visit. It's huge, really huge. Yeah, it seems amazing. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing. Just the entrance, I think it's worth the price of the museum. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we really told, but the, the building is from the 19th century and it's big. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. So, the museum starts with an exposition on the prehistory of Hungary, going from the Paleolithic, the Neolithic, the Iron Age. And it's so nice because you can see like the costumes and recreations of like the houses. And on the upper level, you basically have the whole history of Hungary since the first kings of in the 11th century, going to the feudalism era, the Habsburg absolutism. Then you have the First World War, the Second World War with the German occupation. And then you have uh, the communism influence and the communism here in Hungary, basically finishing up in the... 1990s with the end of communism, so it's a very detailed museum. Okay, now it's way more chilly than it was yeah, when we yeah, really home. For the first stop, the museum was incredible. It was amazing. It was really amazing. Like one, definitely one of the best museums yeah. we, we've seen so yeah. far. And every room is like packed with things. We decided to come to uh, this synagogue. I don't know how to say it, so I'll leave it here. But this is the largest synagogue in all of Europe. It just stays behind the synagogue, obviously, in the Jerusalem. Uh, but yeah, honestly, it seems huge. Uh, it was finished building in 859, and it was part of the Jewish uh, neighborhood in, in Budapest. And it suffered a lot during the Second World War uh, with a lot of uh, air damage, and a lot of members of the Jewish community that were murdered uh, during the Nazi occupation was buried here. So the ticket not only includes the synagogue itself, but it also has a hero's path, a uh, Jewish cemetery, a Jewish museum, and uh, the gardens. Let's go! Oh, it's a heavy door. And all, all the men have to use this. Use this. this. Cover it up. So this synagogue is very unique compared to the others because not only the size, but only the gold and the, the inside walls all painted. It's not normal to have a synagogue like that. Yeah, usually it's more simple. Yeah, it's it's much more simple just to pray. But here it's very different and it's a very beautiful building. Let's go to the museum. Hungarian Jews were killed in the Holocaust and one in every third Jew in Auschwitz was Hungarian. So, I mean, that's a lot. Mm. 
so this was definitely a lot more uh, heavier than we thought. Central Market! Let's get some food! So we just arrived at the Central Market and it's a very big building. In the first uh, floor it's a market with vegetables and that's it. But in the second floor is restaurants and so we'll try to find something traditional to eat and lunch because we are starving. Starving. Yeah. Just like a train station. This is the a Christmas. This is Christmas for Christmas. Oh, the self control now is real. So we, we came here in the central market looking for this. This is the classical, uh, typical Hungarian street food. It's called langus. It's a deep fried uh, flat, uh, bread and we have many var variations. Yeah, we have very options. So we asked for a veggie um, version. It has uh, hupua, onion, tomato, My, uh, feta cheese. I, uh, I think this is cheese sauce. Yeah, kind of. mushrooms. It's, it seems very good and smelling very good. And here is this the classical one. one. Yes, it's sour cream and the uh, cheese is much simpler yeah. and much cheaper. I think this is the most classical basically. Yeah. It feels like their version of pizza though. Mm -hmm. It's a simple flavor but it's very good because this is hot and this is cold so in the mouth it tastes very good. It's like weird. Mm -hmm. Which is amazing. The dough is so nice. It doesn't feel like a pizza one. It's like, um, I don't know, it's like thick but it's so fluffy. It's a little more sweet, right? Yeah. And then the sour cream is not that sour. And then with the cheese. The complete. Yeah. Mm. Look at the cheese sauce. It's more hard to eat. It's more each other. It's good. Mm. Everything here tastes so fresh. The cheese, the tomato, rucola the um, um, purple kale, the mushrooms, and the sauce. Oh my god. Very so fresh. Yeah. Não estou a gravar. Ok, trinca. Isn't it amazing? It's very nice, right? Very it's so fresh. Yeah. It's so nice. Oh my god, the flavors are so good. Oh, it's what, amazing. What's that sauce? I don't know what the, I don't think it's cheesy. It didn't feel like a lot of like cheese, but oh, I don't know, it's oh, amazing. Oh the sauce God. is amazing, right? In fact, I want to order more. <laughs> Can we get more? So, uh, if you guys want to try other things, yeah, yeah. The, uh, they have market. here cabbage rolls, sausages, goulash. Uh, goulash. They have like a lot of meaty things too. And so. Things. so, we're on a quest after our lunch. To go get dessert. Like how cute is that as a Paris kid? So after our little lunch break, we need to walk a little bit before getting some dessert. So we came here, and this is called Saint Stephen Church, and it's the biggest church in all of Hungary. So the name St. Stephen comes from the first king of Hungary, which was St. Stephen. It's so nice, it's so big. We had to walk to take a good photo that captures all we had to walk until almost the end of the square. Yeah, yeah, true. So. So we went to try to uh, get in the basilica because it was free and very good. But unfortunately, it's closed for today. We don't, don't know, know why. why. They were just like closed. Come yeah. back tomorrow. But the schedule, every, every schedule that we saw says this it's open. It's open. Yeah. So every day. So. Yeah, but there's a like a lot of cameras there. Maybe like they're shooting something inside. Something. So yeah, we can't enter. We're so sad because like not only was free, but it seems so pretty. True. to try some tra more traditional food from here so we, we asked for and searched for the chimney cake this is traditional from here but also from Romania the region of Transylvania so it's a sweet made dough and uh, they make here the pastry and the rolled up 
to put in the oven. And they, they, every shot they do it like this, so it's very fresh and uh, uh, really made in time. And the most traditional way is in sugar, but we ask this one with the Nutella to taste yes, it. Okay. Do you can see? Though it's soft, I think it has like a vanilla flavor and then sugar yes. and then inside on the tips is Nutella. Yes, that, that was a very elegant choice. It's good? It's good. It's very sweet, but the dough is so really good. It's so crunchy. Yeah, it's mm. crunchy. It's a very crunchy dough. This is Joanna now. Mm. So just have a little bit left. And now we're going to start walking because it's going to be night very soon. So I think we're going to see the Parliament. Yeah. And end our day by the river and then seeing the parliament at night. Uh, but until then, we're finishing. You're, you're eating everything. Uh, no, I'm not. You always eat like 80%. I eat like That's 20. A lie. I eat like 20. Okay. But the Buddha castle seems really like a big, big complex. Oh yeah, tomorrow we have to leave the house very early to check all that. What are you thinking of the, the new? Very pretty. In the beginning of the Yeah, but I thought it was bigger. Yeah, I thought it was like far. Here on this exact spot, uh, in 1944 and 45, the Hungarian fascist militia killed over 3,500 people. 800 of them were Jewish, and basically they put all the people aligned and uh, they asked them to take off their shoes, to, uh, obviously for the value, and then they shot him in the head and uh, basically the river took the, the bodies. He was erected this memorial with made of, of I think it's 600 pairs, of the shoes to honor the, the victims of the, the massacre. We really estimated poorly uh, yeah, we when did. it would be dark. It was like 4.30 and it was You're sun already was dark, gone. yeah, true. Because like, we forgot the hour changed too, so we're supposed to see this still doing light, but it's still nice like seeing at night. And there's so, all the lights. Yeah, now we're gonna walk a little more to get to the parliament. It's huge. So, Behind me, we have uh, the cider part of the parliament and yeah, just the side seems amazing. So this is officially the largest building in all of Hungary and it's the second largest parliament building in all of Europe. Obviously the first one being the one you saw in Bucharest. If you haven't seen the video, leave it here. Like, oh my God, it's so big. The building itself has over 18,000 square feet, which is a lot in over 700 rooms which is a lot, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the expression that you want to use big is just a euphemism because this is not big this is this ginormous is, look how it shines <laughs> 